guys. Welcome to the Kia of Gas in Rainbow City, Ollie Smith Show, brought to you by our friends at Alley's Carpet. Uh, we're here with Gaston City Head Coach Ollie Smith. Um, coach, coming off a, a tough region loss to uh, to a very good Hoover team. Um, talk to us about how important um, the rest of your region games are uh, going forward the rest of the season. Uh, ultimately, they're, they're extremely important. You know, a lifeline. Uh, we don't need to take another stumble in region play, and our kids understand and our staff understand that. But it's extremely important. All right. Um, in the first half, uh, Hoover's offense it seemed to be seemed to be clicking pretty good, and uh, and then in the second half, it's, it's like the your defense turned that flipped that switch, and, and, and they they were in the backfield most of the night on top of the quarterback in that second half. What kind of adjustments did you guys make um, in the first half to the second half? I guess the adjustments that, it, as my granddad would say, one of those uh, uh, reinsurance uh, adjustments that we had in, in the last six uh, quarters, we didn't play assignment football. So we had to do a little rein adjusting to get everybody to focus in and do the job when we need to make some changes. And that's from uh, from, from a standpoint of executing and doing your job around the single play, which we had done in the last six quarters, and we came out in the second half, and we, we played pretty good uh, football, but we had dug ourselves such a big hole that it was hard to overcome with a team like that. You know, we playing uh, cover one when we were supposed to be playing three. We playing three when we were supposed to be playing one. So, you know, we just had to do a little re yeah. um, and just the, the, the offense through the first couple of games, well, they, they've, been, they've been on fire. And, and they seem like they had a hard time kind of kind of getting getting that motor going. Yeah. It, will you contribute that to, to Hoover's defense? Or? I, I don't know if that contributed much to uh, Hoover's defense or to our mentality of our kids not controlling what they can control uh, and, 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 and scoring what we can, not trying to slow the ball down, trying to play a different game because the defense was struggling instead of going ahead and moving the ball. We came out the last two weeks. And, and we move the ball, and then we get in the red zone, and we stalled out. And so the other night, it's the same thing. We come out, we drive the ball down, then we get there, then we, we have a miscue on what we were trying to do on fourth down. And so that 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 cost us a little issues right there. But you know, I, not to take anything away from Hoover's defense, I think it was more of a mental thing for us on that side of the ball. Yeah, yeah, I kind of felt that. I don't know if it was uh, all of the lights and 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 fanfare that Hoover had. I, I it just I don't know it. It was a different atmosphere, I guess. Well, I guess as I tell our players, I tell our, our coaches, and you know, it's hard to tell a, a community of fans or whatever you may have it. But you, we're trying to play a football team. But you know, uh, when you got your kids going other places and everybody else having you already for dead before you ever play, yeah. and, and they, you know, I, I've mentioned it before. Nobody knows who's in those buildings, and you know, we need to go play the football team that's right there you know that team of seniors that's on their team hasn't won a state championship so take away the championships that they've won in the past you know like i said they got a really good football team but we need to play the people that's out there that year not for the years past because if that's the case we got really good players that have played in the past as well exactly exactly i, I think i had that conversation with a coach at another school uh, a couple of days ago about that you know you need to line up and play the team and, and not not their state championships. championships. Exactly, <laughs> you know? not the name. Yeah. Uh, um, moving on to this week, you know, we got a, a tough Spain Park team coming in this week. Um, talk about some of the things you've seen on film from them on the defensive side of the ball. A, a very disciplined group. They are gonna uh, they don't get out of uh, out of their lanes too much, out of their rush lanes. They, they cover very well. Uh, they tackle. They get to the football very well. Uh, they they have good. They are very well coached up on that side of the ball. Okay, and uh, kind of and the same question on the offensive side. What have you seen from them on offensive side? Hey, they do. They they got a good offensive system. They know where they want to go with the football. They throw it around pretty good. They they, they have a, a a nice spread attack as well as a nice running attack, and, and they do a good job of getting the playmakers to football. Okay, um, this, with it being homecoming week, you know, you normally have a lot of distractions going on, but as we all know, twenty twenty has not been a normal year. <laughs> Um, talk about not having all those distractions with school being in since you guys are virtual. Um, how how is that? Do you think that's going to help the team this week? Not having those distractions. Well, I, I'll tell you what I told uh, uh, told them on another show earlier today that I, I feel uh, I, in, in a way it's great for me mm -hmm. and for the kids, but I also feel bad for the regular student body and those. Yeah. Uh, 
young men and young women in the, in the school as a whole not to get a, a chance to celebrate the young ladies in the homecoming core mm -hmm. and, and, and in that regard and, and for those young ladies not to be celebrated in front of the student body the faculty and everybody to congratulate them mm -hmm. so you know we want to hopefully we can celebrate them tomorrow night in the way and, and, send, and, and let them enjoy a nice atmosphere of competitive football but you know for me personally I hadn't had to talk to him about not going and, and working on the folks and staying out all night and things like that. Yeah. So, yes, I matter of fact, I've kind of had to remind them that it is homecoming week <laughs> because, you know, they're so into other things and, you know, they're not realizing because there's not a lot of homecoming activities going on. Yeah. So they, they hadn't even really thought about it in that regard. I guess it is. That can, that can be a good thing. Yes. That means they're focused on the game tomorrow night. Yeah. <laughs> um, we kind of we're approaching the mid midpoint of the season. Um, let's talk about the health of the team. Uh, How is everybody doing? Are you pretty healthy right it, now? It, it's a little up and up and down. I guess we're about like everybody else. We have some. Uh, um, we we have a really one key injury, and hopefully in the next week we start working to get him back on the field. Okay. In the next two weeks, uh, obviously we lost uh, Jane Lawson. Uh, um, that was a major part of offense, defense, and special teams. Mm -hmm. um, um, on week one or week zero, and then uh, we we have a lot of bumps and bruises. Uh, guys coming out of the last ball game was banged up pretty good. Uh, uh, um, so, but we we feel like we're fairly healthy. We still get Aaron Richards back, one of our mainstays uh, on the defensive line. Okay. I think that he's working to get back a little bit healthy. So, we'll, we'll, we'll be we'll be fine. I think we'll be ready. Good deal. Good deal. Um, one thing I did notice, uh, kind of going back to the Hoover game, was the fans. State <laughs> through the whole game, and uh, they they were still cheering in the fourth quarter like they were cheering at the beginning of the game. Talk about talk about how important that was for you and the and the, and the, and the program. Well, well, the big thing about that is, is those fans that were there are mainstays, and those are the ones that you can feel them. The kids feel them. The kids know they're there, and so you you know those are the ones that they're gonna be there regardless of what. Yeah, and, and yeah. so with with the. Uh, with the apps, obviously with the COVID and the uh, limited amount of people that can come, your main people are going to be there with you. If we go and, and, and make a trip out of the state, those people that was there on Friday night will be there and we appreciate them. And we have some that listen in on the radio that's always listening, not going to miss uh, miss anything. And, and, and they keep up with the guys and the program. And but what we want to do, is, and I know our kids want to, they want to make a better statement and represent their community and those fans and get them something to be proud of as well. Yeah, that, that, I don't know seeing that a Friday night because I, I looked a few minutes early to beat the traffic yes. out of there. But it, it, it made me it made me feel good. It made me feel proud to be from Gaston and, and, and being, being affiliated with the Gaston City program. Um, I guess we're going to close out. I'm going to let you open the floor. Uh, if there, is there anything you want to say? Oh, no. Man, just say stay, stay tuned with us and stay in tune with the kids and believe in it. And we, we're going to get this thing turned around and we hope we get back on the winning side of the things this coming Friday night. All right. Sounds good. And uh, guys, don't forget to check in with us. Uh, every Thursday, we're here at Kia store of uh, Kia store of Rainbow City and Gaston uh, with Coach Ollie Smith. And uh, tomorrow night's homecoming with against the Spain Park Jaguars. And we're out.